Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Sports News Flash at 12. I am your weekend sports anchor, Miguel Mike Medina. Boy, I would like to get started with this tremendous um, phenomenon. Paul Skeens, he is dominating um, in AAA. Through four starts, he has striked out 27 batters with five hits allowed in 12 to third innings. His ERA is zero, guys zero. Skeens is averaging a 100.2 miles per hour in his fastball. That's great, you know, but I don't want him to use too much of that because I don't want him to end up having Tommy John surgery if he just mostly uses this fastball. Um, Skeens told Pat McAfee, which he was on a show recently, that he likes the idea of the pitch clock. He likes it. He has no problem with that. So it will be interesting to see how he would um, work this out once he reaches to the major leagues. But from what I'm seeing so far, the Pirates are very lucky to have him and hopefully he stays as a Pirate for a long time. And hopefully he stays healthy as well. Well, guys, it's the end of an era. Um, John Sterling, he is retiring. Very sad to say that as a Yankee fan. He has been the voice of the Yankees for 36 seasons. And he was honored with an on-field ceremony before Saturday's game against Tampa Bay. What a career has been for John Sterling. The man is 85 years old. He has nothing left to prove. He's done it all. Great inspiration. He's been a big part of my life for the last 24, 25 years. Oh man. We're going to miss him, but we thank him for all the memories. The NBA playoffs is here. Orlando Magic took on the Cleveland Cavaliers. This was the very first game of the NBA playoffs. Cleveland set the tone from the beginning by going on not just one, but two runs in the first quarter. That's how they build the momentum in this game. One of the things that we were concerned was about Donovan Mitchell's um, knee situation but he looked absolutely fine on the court he led the Cavs with 30 points and of course that thunderous dunk in the first quarter was big time the Cavs demonstrated their playoff experience in this game um Jared Allen he had 18 rebounds Evan Mobley added 16 points the Cavs won this game 97 to 83 Paolo Banchero um he made his playoff debut for the Orlando Magic. He scored 24 points, but he committed nine turnovers, so he needs to um, fix that for game two. Orlando's offense was just, they were out of sync. So, but I understand this is a young and experienced group, and we just have to see how they will do in game two. I do have the Cavs winning the series by at least in six games. And but they have set the tone right from the get go, and they play very good basketball. I like when games are less than 100 points, it reminds me of the early 2000s and the 90s as well. But 97 83, I like, I like the way that is. I hate seeing games that end up 120 something, 130 something, 140 something. So, this is fine with me. The number six Phoenix Suns took on number three Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota's bench outscored Phoenix bench. Their bench was big time. Anthony Edwards, what can I say about him? He's a different animal this season. He played outstanding against Phoenix. He read the defense well. Um, he just had a wonderful game. I mean, I love the trash talk that he gave to Kevin Durant. Um, Anthony Edwards finished with 33 points. The third quarter was the best quarter for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Anthony Edwards scored 18 of his 33 points in that quarter. Minnesota won this game 120 to 95. Minnesota's defense, what can I say about them? Their defense was exceptional in game one against Phoenix. Rudy Gobert obviously was one of the biggest reasons why. He had a double-double with 14 points, 16 rebounds. Um, Carl Anthony Towns added 19 points. Um, Nikhil Alexander Walker scored 18 points on 7 for 12 shooting. As for the Phoenix Suns, Kevin Durant, 
he led them with 31 points. But Devin Booker, he struggled in this game. Um, he didn't have a great shooting night. He had 18 points, but his field, field goal percentage was, was not good. Now, the Suns are holding their breaths, and they're hoping that this is not a serious injury for Grayson, Grayson Allen. Um, he's the NBA's leading three-point shooter. He left the game, I believe it was in the third quarter, with a sprained ankle. So his status for game two is uncertain for now. But the Suns really need him because he's an important piece um, off their bench. So let's see what happens. But a uh, great game by Minnesota, both offensively and defensively. The number seven seed, Philadelphia 76ers, took on my team. Um, the New York Knicks has the number two seed. I love, and I repeat, I love the battle between Joel Embiid and Mitchell Robinson in the front court. Both guys are very good defensive players. Joel Embiid, um, he got off to a good start in the first quarter. Tyrese Maxey um, um, got off to a good start as well with his speed and athleticism. Joel Embiid on the post, um, being aggressive. Um, but uh, you can. But I will say this: that Joel Embiid, he's a warrior. You could tell that he was hurt. You could tell that he's not one hundred percent. But he battled. He wanted to be out there. He went down at one point in the game because of his knee, but he stuck around throughout the whole game and he battled. So, um, but the story for this game was the next role players. I mean, Deuce McBride, his contribution for this game was just massive. Um, Deuce McBride, who's the backup for Jalen Brunson, he scored 21 points. He also outscored Philly by himself with 13 in the second quarter. So the next one, this game, 111 to 104. That fourth quarter was entertaining, entertaining to watch. Josh Hart, what can I say about him? He's big time. He finished with 22 points and had 13 rebounds. Bogdanovich added 13 points off the bench. The role players is what helped um, the Knicks to win this game. When your star player is not playing so well, the role players have to step up. And that's what I wanted for the Knicks in this series. You have Julius Randle out, but the role players need to step up. You can't have Jalen Brunson score 30 plus points every single night. So, and Jalen Brunson, who struggled last night, um, he shot eight for 26 from the field, but he had seven rebounds and seven assists. Again, um, that's fine. But the role players is what carry the load in game one, um, especially that fourth quarter when Philly, when Philly went on uh, outscore the Knicks 32 to 15 in the third quarter. The Knicks dominated the second quarter, but Philly came back in the third quarter. But in the fourth quarter, the role players stepped up. Joel Embiid, um, he finished the game with 29 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Tyrese Maxey led the Sixers with 33 points. He had a terrific game. Tyrese Maxey, in my opinion, is my most improved player of the year. Now, um, game two, let's see how Philly will respond. Or will Jalen Brunson will have a better game? And he should have a better game in game two because the Knicks can't afford um, for him to have these bad shooting nights, which will happen. But because he is the guy on that team, the number one player on the team, um, he needs to have a better shooting night for game two. Lakers versus Nuggets in a rematch of last year's Western Conference Finals. The Lakers got off to a great start in the first quarter. LeBron was aggressive. AD was aggressive. Um, but, you know, no matter how good you play, you can never take your foot off the gas against this Denver team. They are the reign defending champions for, for a reason. I love the pick and roll situation between Jokic and Murray. The Nuggets ball movement is just flat out unbelievable. I love teams that move the ball, they share the ball, make smart plays, well execution, and Denver Nuggets bring that. Jokic, he finished with 32 points, 12 rebounds, Jamal Murray, 
22 points, 10 assists. Michael Porter Jr., I mean, who's gone through so much this week with situation with his family. He finished with 10 points, I mean, 19 points, excuse me, and eight rebounds. The Nuggets had 15 offensive rebounds for 18 second chance points. That is huge. The Lakers, um, I mean, LeBron finished with 27, AD with 32, but that was just not enough um, to take down the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets have just too many weapons. They're very well coached, and their ball movement is just bananas. You have the best player in the NBA, in my opinion, which is Nikola Jokic, and he makes it look so easy. He, he's just a phenomenal player phenomenal player and we are seeing a possible third league MVP trophy that he'll be collecting it should have been four in a row but I believe he'll pick up his third one this season the Stanley Cup playoffs day one is here and we're gonna close this episode with this Carolina Hurricanes um, they grab game one with a 3-1 to one win over the New York Islanders, who came into the um, postseason red-hot winning eight of their last nine games. Goalie, Frederick Anderson, he made 32, 33 saves for Carolina. Carolina scored one of their three power play situations in this game. Carolina did everything they could, but this, but the, if I had to give the, the hockey puck to someone, player of the game in this game, it will be the goaltender, Frederick Anderson. He did an outstanding job for the Islanders. Both teams play very well, good defense. Both goalies play great, but Anderson, um, he just did a little bit more, so I'll give it to him. Toronto Maple Leafs, Boston Bruins. Um, this is a matchup that scares me for the Toronto Maple Leafs because I don't want them. I don't want them to go out in the first round. I want them to go far this season. But the Boston Bruins, you know, they're a very good team. Very good team. They dominated the Maple Leafs in this game. They grabbed Game One with a five to one victory. Um, Jake DeBrusque he scored two goals and had one assist. Charlie McAvee had two assists. Goalie Jeremy Swayman picked up thirty five saves. This was all Bruins. The entire game, they led and they dominated Toronto. The Bruins um, scored two out of their five um, power play situations. As for Toronto, they went 0 for 3 in power play situations. The Bruins also won 57% of their faceoffs compared to Toronto's 43% faceoff. Toronto needs to be better in game two. They have to win game two. I I don't want to see them go back to Toronto go, um, with O2 deficit. Game two, in my opinion, is a must-win game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mitch Marner, step up. Matthew, um, Austin Matthews, step up. Nylander, step up. Tavares, step up. This team cannot afford to lose in the first round. You got out of the first round last year, you had to do it this year. It doesn't matter if Boston is in your way. You have to figure out a way to beat them on the road in game two and win the series in general. That does it for this episode of Sports News Flash at 12. We have four games of Stanley Cup playoffs starting at 12 today with the Battle of Florida, um, Tampa Bay Lightning, Florida Panthers. So four Stanley Cup games today. We have four um, NBA playoff games today. You know, we have baseball. Obviously, we have NASCAR, Talladega. Um, I might watch Talladega nights um, before um, the event starts. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, I mean, April and October are the best months when it comes to sports. So um, for all of us who are sports lovers and fans, we're blessed. We're blessed around this time of the year. So um, email me. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you want to see for future episodes. Um, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Enjoy your Sunday. May God bless each and every one of you.
Take care, everyone. I'll see you guys next Sunday for a new episode of Sports News Flash at 12.